Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to, in a very easy way, get into Avatar comics and also Legend of Korra comics. This video is for those people who have perhaps seen both series, um, Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, and perhaps are wanting to know, is there any other story content out there? Uh, in like web animations, web comics, or actual comic books and so on. Where do I get the rest of the story? Is there any other story? And this video is here to say that yes, there are the main extra story content outside of the two shows is the comics from Dark Horse Comics. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get into them. What's the like order of reading? And I suppose mainly just show you that it's not actually too complicated. There's uh, not too many books at all, especially for Legend of Korra, where they've only recently just started to put out comics. But Avatar, there is a little bit of a kind of lineup, uh, a couple of years worth of comics, but it's it's even they aren't too bad to kind of deal with. So let's get into it with just the fact that, look, they're all produced by Dark Horse Comics. They are canon, so... They are kind of just as valid in terms of the story that they tell as the um, stories from the shows themselves. Because Mike and Brian, who are, were the creators of Avatar and Korra, they assist uh, quite heavily on the comics, uh, both Avatar and Korra. Um, Mike is actually even writing the um, Korra comics at the moment. But on the Avatar comics, they kind of uh, provide kind of creative assistance to the writer and uh, artist on the individual comics. Um, so the first comic that Dark Horse released was actually a kind of a, a one-off book, a kind of one-shot collection of short comics. And these comics were initially released um, with the old Nickelodeon magazine while Avatar The Last Airbender was still on the air. So they're fairly old at this point. But this book collects them together and it's called The Lost Adventures. It's a pretty big book. Uh, it's like over 200 pages of, of, of uh, stories. And most of them are set um, in between episodes of the show. And also there's some very interesting stories that are set in between the seasons of the show, in between the books. And these stories vary from being kind of very quick, like two pages, just Anne gets a cold, has a bit of a run-in with some bees and stuff like that, to longer stories where they kind of get dragged into the swamp again, they kind of meet this orphanage, and there's a, a whole kind of issue that kind of comes up, to even more emotional mo ones where we're getting more context for like Ang and Katara's relationship before it happens, how Katara felt about um, Ang while he was unconscious in between book two and three of the show, and much more. Um, not all of the stories, as I said, are um, kind of super impactful, but it's a very fun book, and it's definitely, I think, the first thing that you should go to because it kind of fills in a little bit of the things from the from the show, whereas all the other comics I'm going to talk about cover basically what happens after the show. So here's this book filling in gaps that maybe we didn't get to in the show, and then the rest come afterwards. So that's The Lost Adventures. It's the first comic that was released. It's It's kind of, at this point, almost tends to be the book that's like forgotten about a little bit. It doesn't get discussed as much, but it's absolutely worth kind of getting your hands on. Um, it's a really, really fun book to read. You get a lot of different writers, a lot of different artists uh, for the different stories. And so you really get a, a kind of wide variety of different kind of takes on the Avatar world. And some of the stories are quite interesting. Like it, um, it, there's one story in particular that gives you some extra insight into May and Zuko's relationship, specifically showing their like, uh, you know, first kiss basically. So that's that. Then the majority of this video, I suppose, has to focus on the comics that basically continue the story of Avatar: The Last Airbender after the end of the Sozin's Comet finale. And these are what I suppose the fans primarily re refer to as the comic trilogies because the way Dark Horse released these books is that the story has a title and then there's title part one, title part two, title part three. And then later on, after the three parts of the book are out, we have the full story. They also release a kind of collected edition of that book and that book is like the title hardcover. So these books started off with The Promise. Um, and you can see up on screen here, the hardcover kind of, uh, the cover for the hardcover as well as the cover for the individual parts that make up The Promise. You get the exact sto same story content regardless of which way you decide to purchase the books, whether you buy the three individual parts or you go for the bigger hardcover collection with 
with some of the extras that are in there. Um, and what the promise is actually about, as a brief idea of where this picks up, is like we more or less we skip ahead a year after the end of the series, and it's most of our kind of um, leader characters, Ang, Zuko, and also King Quay, figuring out what to do in the aftermath of the war. That fundamentally the war sort of started because the Fire Nation tried to take over some of the Earth Kingdom. What do they do with the towns that have been taken over for the fire by the Fire Nation for so long? It's been like over a hundred years. And, you know, the Fire Nation and Earth Kingdom are sort of linked in these towns. How do they make a decision about whether to just let the Fire Nation sort of keep control over these parts of the Earth Kingdom and sort of justify a part of the war? Or do they pull the Fire Nation out of those um, uh, colonies, I suppose that they're called now, and sort of uproot people who have lived there for generations at this point in time because the war was a hundred years? Um, and they were established for even a little bit longer than that. So there's a lot of really cool issues that come up here as we have like obviously our younger characters like Ang and Zuko having to adapt to now being leaders in the world. And there's some other stuff going on here as well. You get to see some very cute moments with Ang and Katara. And obviously other stuff happens as well. Toph has a an interesting plot where she starts up a metal bending school. But I won't spoil it any more than that. That's what the first story is about. I will discuss more when I go through all the different comics. I'll cut over to me on camera actually showing you some of the differences between the individual parts of um, uh, a comic versus the hardcover and really talk about that decision of like which one you should get. Um, so the second uh, comic series which takes place after The Promise, the, there is an order to these individual uh, titles but it's, it's order of release basically, it's all in chronological order. So The Promise comes first, second is The Search and The Search is definitely I think the one that a lot of people will perhaps know about but it is actually the second comic and you do need a little bit of the context from The Promise to fully I think get what's going on in The Search. But the search is very self-explanatory as to what it's about in terms of the appeal. We finally get into properly dealing with the question, what happened to Zuko's mother? What happened to Ursa? And we deal with that, we get a lot of insight into Ursa, full like backstory on her. Azula comes back into play in this book and it starts her trend in the comic of kind of um, stepping more into the spotlight a little bit more, being set up as being... You know, there's some important stuff going to happen with Azula in the comics. Um, and obviously there, it's it's this journey where the whole team sort of comes together to help Zuko search for his mother and what is going on. Um, it has a surprising amount of kind of spiritual aspects where the spirits are kind of involved in it. So it's a very interesting story, very well thought out. And if you had any worries about like, oh, a comic covering such a big topic... It's very highly regarded in the fandom as actually covering this topic very, very well. So that's what the search is about. And as I said, on screen, there are the three individual parts and the hardcover for the search. The third uh, comic trilogy is called The Rift. This one is more kind of tough focused, but Ang is in it kind of just as much. And this one, um, the big thing here is that it's Toph dealing with some of the issues with her parents, in this case primarily her father. And we get a little bit more insight into her father, the exact nature of the businesses that he's doing, especially at this point in time now that the war is over. Whereas Aang has more of a, I suppose, Avatar specific journey where he has a more spiritual kind of uh, uh, arc in the book. But it also brings him and Toph into conflict with each other as they kind of deal with this um, theme of um, modernization versus tradition. Aang, of course, wants to bring sort of some of the air, air nomad culture kind of traditional aspects back, whereas Toph wants the world to advance. And they kind of clash over kind of incidents that happen over the course of the book. Um, so it's actually really, really well done. There's a lot of kind of cool moments, kind of surprise kind of character moments as well that happen in here. It's another kind of very, very strong book. Um, the fourth comic is called Smoke and Shadow. Again, you can see the, all the covers on screen here. And this one is about, it's a, it's, it starts off a little bit more kind of Fire Nation politics focused. It's kind of dealing with the aftermath of the search and what kind of happened there and the return to the Fire Nation. Um, but we also start to get into, I suppose, some of the um, kind of lore, I suppose, of the Fire Nation. We actually get some very interesting history on the Fire Nation. 
some very nice spiritual elements that uh, the writer of uh, all five of these comics I'm going to talk about here, Gene Yang, does exceptionally well over all of these books. They incorporate some spiritual stuff quite nicely in here. And then more notably, uh, it fairly heavily deals with like uh, Zuko and May's relationship. Um, obviously stuff happens in the other books that kind of brings it into the spotlight a little bit more. And this one covers it in a, in a lot more detail. May really kind of steps into a role as like a main character here. Tai Lee also sort of gets a little bit more of a bigger role here, similarly with Suki. Um, so you get to see a lot of the kind of more minor characters actually shine in this story, like May's family gets a bit of a spotlight and comes to a conclusion that like we're still looking forward to when it's actually going to, they're going to return to some of the plot threads set up in this comic. It's one of those comics that every time I read it, it kind of becomes uh, better each time. So it, it's, it's a very interesting comic in that way. The, the most recent comic that has been fully released is called North and South. And you can see all the covers here. What this one's about is it's about Katara and Sokka's return to their home in the Southern Water Tribe for the first time since they left at the start of the, the animated series, Avatar The Last Airbender. So it has that immediate hook of like, oh, what's that gonna be like for them? How much has the, the tribe changed? And it's about that exactly. Um, it, the general gist is that Sokka is fairly okay with all the changes. Katara actually has a hard time adapting to how different the tribe is and the some of the northerners uh, being down there now and them sort of almost taking control of things. And there's a lot of sort of water tribe politics that come into play. Sokka and uh, Katara especially gets this kind of spotlight in this book along with Hakoda getting a, a bigger role in this book. Um, the other characters come back in, but this is definitely the book where like, even like Aang isn't as much of a focus here. The, the spotlight is sort of given to Katara and the Water Tribes for most of this book. And while I don't think it's the best comic, it's still absolutely worth reading just to see the return to the South. And the setup for some of where they're going with regards to the overall world building of what the comics are like leading towards which is the stuff that obviously is different in Korra, primarily the establishment of Republic City. So that's that. Um, they have announced what the next Avatar comic is going to be. It's going to be called Imbalance, and that's going to be coming out in a couple of months. It looks like this is going to be the first time that Avatar is really going to deal with the bender versus non-bender issue. But at the moment, that book has not yet been released. We don't know a ton about it beyond just the, the main theme that we're going to deal with in the book. So that is the main kind of comic trilogies that we have. Imbalance is going to be one of those trilogies. It's going to be first released as Imbalance Part 1. A couple of months later, we'll get Part 2. A couple of months later, we'll get Part 3. And then a couple of months after that, we'll get a hardcover collection of all three parts together with some extras. Um, and then they have announced also another book which is similar to The Lost Adventures. It's going to be a series of kind of um, kind of short stories collected together. By the sounds of things, most of them are going to be set after the end of the series. So it's like The Lost Adventures but for after the series. Um, this one is going to collect some of the b books I've yet to talk about which are the free comic book day books which is obviously the first uh, Saturday in every May. Uh, all the p comic publishers kind of re release a free comic. It's just a short one to kind of give you an insight into what they do. And Avatar has released a couple of these in the past. And finally, this book is going to actually collect the three Avatar comics that have been previously only available as um, a free comics in the past. So what those books are, are um, the first one was a Rebound, which is actually a really good setup for Smoke and Shadow. It's kind of almost, I'd say, like required reading that you read the short story Rebound and then head into um, Smoke and Shadow. Uh, there's the other story Shells, which is a kind of Sokka, Suki kind of uh, a little bit of kind of like focusing on them as a couple, but also some backstory on Kiyoshi that's actually quite good. And then the other story is called Sisters, and it's a weird pair up of characters, but it's uh, Tai Lee and Toph. But the big thing here is that we actually get to meet Ty Lee's sisters in this book. So it's actually quite fun. So those three books are going to be collected in this book, Team Avatar Tales, in addition to a lot of other new stories that we've never seen before. 
and by the sound of things we're going to get some very very fun stories like the lost adventures has it's been something we've kind of been asking for a lot in the fandom recently because obviously uh, the lost adventures was so long ago we kind of want the kind of short story format to come back and they're doing that with team avatar tales so that's that so that's avatar comic that's like everything that there is for avatar comics it right now at the moment is just in terms of what's released one one shot book which is the lost adventures and then five comic trilogies the order of which is the promise the search the rift smoke and shadow north and south and then the soon to be released imbalance and and then obviously coming up as well is the second one shot uh, book comic collection which is team avatar tales so it's actually quite simple, um, but while, before I get into discussing the details of hardcovers versus um, the individual parts and showing them off to you a little bit more, let's get into Cora Comics and what's been established so far. Much shorter here with Cora Comics. Um, right now there's only one confirmed series and we're still in the middle of it. It's called Legend of Korra Turf Wars. And right now we have part one and part two out. But the cover and some of the details for part three have been revealed and it's not that far away. Uh, we assume, but it's yet to be announced, that there will be a hardcover collection of Turf Wars in the upcoming months as well. So what this book is about is it's set immediately after the end of The Legend of Korra and it focuses fairly hev heavily on Korra and Asami's relationship. It really jumps straight into that. That is a huge focus of part one especially. There is other plots going on, uh, like um, issues surrounding the new spirit portal that is now in the city, and how to actually you know, deal with the fact that there's one right in the middle of like the biggest city in the world, effectively. Um, <clears throat> the triads kind of come into things a little bit more, uh, a new character is introduced that kind of shakes things up and kind of create the, creates the conflict. But definitely the highlight of this book is that it is a big, big focus on Korra and Asami. Uh, and their relationship. So The Legend of Korra also has free comics. Uh, we don't have as many of them. Uh, the last one that we got, the only one that's actually out right now, uh, is called Friends for Life and this free comic focuses on basically younger Korra and how she first came to meet Naga. So it's actually a very important story of just Korra finding Naga for the first time and it's really cool how they managed to tell that in such a short space of time. This year's free comic book day, which is actually coming up, uh, for, again, it's going to be the first Saturday in May, which I believe is May 5th this year, uh, might need to correct me on that, but either way, first Saturday in May this year, we have a free comic book day for this year, and this year we don't know the title of the story just yet, but we know that it's going to feature a short story with Korra and Milo. And it seems like they're going to be helping to round up some animals that have escaped. So that should be fun. Milo is a kind of bit of an interesting character to team Korra up with. But it should be a fun story. Uh, right now we don't know when these two books are going to be collected into any sort of a like Korra short story collection. We don't know that. So at the moment... Uh, Friends for Life you can find online. I'll actually have a link to that book in uh, the description of this video because it isn't actually available to like buy officially. And then obviously the this year's one with Milo, uh, you obviously have to go to your local comic book store on Free Comic Book Day to get a hold of. But uh, yeah, that's uh, it for Free Comics and that's it for uh, Core Comics overall right now. That's really all there is to say about Core Comics right now. Um, we're still waiting for news on if they will be doing more. Most fans assume that they will, once part 3 comes out, probably announce what the next core comic is. But we just don't have that information right now. So that's most of that stuff. Um, and I suppose just right now I should say, that's not everything that there is in terms of extra story content that is that outside of the shows. There is other stuff, but I'll probably cover that in a separate video. Uh, that is stuff like the, the webcomic series, um, the trading cards, all the other places where there is actually information um, that isn't really present anywhere else. I'll cover that separately. So yeah, now I'll just cut over to myself on camera showing you the difference between the three parts 
and the hardcovers and also I suppose explaining a little bit more about like the pricing of these books and if they're available digitally or not. So first off let's cover the individual parts because if you get into comics now you'll probably end up picking up some of the individual parts of the new comics as they come out. And so here is the three parts of like the most recent Avatar comic North and South. So here's part one, part two, and part three. And then together the three of these make up the entire story of North and South. Um, so they're fairly small books actually when you look at them. If you're used to comics, these are actually smaller than like an individual issue of a uh, normal comic. It's not that they're tiny or anything like that, it's not that the art feels small, it's just the format that they've gone for, this uh, kind of smaller graphic novel style. Each of these uh, parts has about 70 to 72 pages of actual story content, which means that each overall trilogy ends up being like 210, 216 pages uh, long in total. So fairly substantial stories. They do the exact same thing for the Korra comics. Here's Turf Wars part uh, one and Turf Wars Part 2, which is all that's released so far. And again, these each have about 70 to 72 pages of story content. Um, that's just the format that they like to do for some reason. And then similarly, The Lost Adventures, which I said was the one-shot book, um, is the same size as like an individual part. So, but obviously it's much thicker because it has, you know, basically 210 plus pages of stuff. Of content in here. Um, so just be used to the fact that uh, your Avatar comic collection might be a lot smaller than your other kind of comics uh, that you have. Um, so now let's quickly cover the hardcovers here. So much bigger book, um, obviously size comparison would be this. So you see I have them right down here at the corner. Much 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 bigger here. So it doesn't mean that the art is the full size of the book, as I'll show you here. Just to quickly show you off some pages. So you can see that there is a fairly substantial like border here between the sides of the pages as well as the top and bottom. But the, the, the actual art in the hardcovers is still um, bigger by, you know, about 10% I'd say is the size difference between the art in the hardcover and the individual parts. Not too big. Now the reason why they leave so much space is that on certain pages um, the writer or artist does give comments at times about parts of the book. You can sort of see the text there as he just gives a little bit of commentary about what's actually happening on the page. Um, so that's why they do it. Um, I prefer the art to be bigger, but the co the commentary on, in the annotations, as it's called, is at times actually quite interesting. And then there is some pages of extras at the back where they go over some like character design stuff, as well as the different kind of uh, stages of kind of concept work on the um, you know certain panels, as well as um, the covers and so on. So, for instance. There is some character design for Hakoda because he isn't really in the comics all that much. So this is his main kind of uh, uh, appearance. Top in her winter outfit. And then Katara and Sokka obviously coming back to the south in this book are back in their kind of winter stuff. So you get about, you know, 20 pages or so of kind of concept stuff. And obviously it's completely up to you about, say, if you're buying north and south. If you want to go for the big hardcover or you just want to get the three individual parts. Um, you are paying slightly more if you're paying full retail price to get uh, the hardcover over the three individual parts, mainly because it's such a bigger book and obviously has the hardcover as well. Um, the retail price here, 40 US dollars for the hardcovers and then each of these parts is 11 US dollars. So you pay 33 at full price for the these or 40. Now obviously if you ordered them from Amazon, You'll probably find most of these books for somewhere between like six, seven, eight dollars or something like that plus shipping. And then most of the hardcovers you'll probably find for like, I think at the lowest probably 25 to 35 or something like that. Um, but you can get them much cheaper in that way. Um, it's entirely up to you. Obviously if you buy from comic book stores you're going to be paying pretty much full price. 
if you order online you will be able to find prices um, cheaper as well. Um, and then I, I think it's it's more or less the case where like the hardcovers for like the older comic series like The Promise and The Search uh, kind of keep their price a little higher than some of the newer ones. That's just because of supply basically. Um, and then are these books available digitally is I suppose the last thing to cover. Yes. Um, I believe the only thing that's sort of um, exclusive to the print versions is that you don't get the extras in like the the, in the, the trilogy, so The Promise, The Search, The Rift and so on. There's no, I think, digital way to just get the hardcover. So all of the individual parts are actually available digitally uh, from like Comixology, Dark Horse Digital, more or less I think any place that sells digital comics uh, you will be able to find the Avatar books on there. And usually the prices are actually okay. I think it's actually a little cheaper to actually buy them digitally. But it obviously depends on if you like getting actual physical books or getting comics digitally. But um, this is just to show you that Avatar comics are pretty simple at a base level to get into. This was just meant to be a kind of beginner's introduction. Of course, people who are kind of uh, have been on my channel for a while. This probably isn't the video for you because you probably know this stuff already. But this is just for people who are only maybe f initially getting into the Avatar comics, aren't aware of exactly where to go. But uh, yeah, I think that's most of the video. Uh, I'll just end by saying, as I said, I think earlier on in the video, I will probably do another video giving you like a, a basic introduction to some of the other content out there, like the web comics for Avatar and Korra, as well as the other kind of more obscure places where there is actually information available uh, that is kind of canon. So uh, yeah, that's been the video. Hope you liked the video. Any questions that you have about Avatar comics, leave them below and I will I'll try my best to answer them as best I can. But yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.